Everyone, welcome to Behavior Code Podcast. This is my Tuesday podcast. I'm your host, Yogi Chris, PhD. I'm the founder of Ninth Limb Yoga. This podcast is sponsored by Ninth Limb Yoga. I also have a PhD in engineering. And I'm a top student of Arash Sapar Dibazar. And this podcast is brought to you originally as an interview, uh, like, um, interview show for messengers, people who had graduated the messengers program. Now, my guest today, Andrew Ratterman from San Diego, graduated two messengers online programs, and he's also come to a boot camp, uh, Love Spell 2.0 boot camp, which is a, uh, particularly the mind control and hypnosis boot camp, which is very related to the two messengers camps he came to, which are only available online. They didn't, they didn't happen live. These messengers were the keys to the matrix and the philosopher's stone, if, I'm, if I have yeah, it right. Yeah, correct. And those are heavy hitters, man. Keys yeah. to the Matrix, and everybody, anybody who's listening to the recordings on this, of the this show, it's on iTunes, YouTube, and all the podcast platforms. If you catch it, you've definitely heard me talk about Keys to the Matrix and uh, the Philosopher's Stone. These are epic trainings that, mm-hmm. well, let's get, um, let's get Andrew's take on it, actually. You know, Andrew, you were a baseball player in university, and yeah. then you found pickup in social dynamics afterwards with, uh, well, how did you get into it? So I got into it. Uh, I was living in New Mexico. So I went to play baseball in New Mexico. So it was like deserted out of the middle of nowhere and just playing baseball. And I lived with my girlfriend. Everything was good. I had like a high school three year girlfriend. And then I was like going on three, four years again with the same girl. And I just started one day in the outfield. Uh, one of my teammates during batting practice was like, you know, you should check out this dude Arash online. And so I was booked him up that night and that's pretty much how I got into it and then just one random day Vince was on the podcast with or Arash was on the podcast with Vince and he said if you get on Aphrodite's Prince and Diamond Mine you'll be a fucking monster and I was like all right sign me up so pretty much got into the whole teachings from there in New Mexico and then just listening to Arash pretty much has like allowed me to make decisions and necessary risks that I probably would not have taken in the grand scheme of life. So that's pretty much how I got into it. I just started listening and just knew right away he was the man to listen to. All right. So then moving, moving forward in time then, so you've been training, you've done lots of trainings throughout time, you know, lots Mm -hmm. of classes, lectures, uh, events. I've seen you at many events and these are events in Los Angeles and in San Jose and uh, what's different now after going through that early, early to mid part of your journey? Like what changed about you? What would somebody notice if, if you could somehow live in two parallel universes and see one universe where you didn't do it, one you did, what's different about you? Great question. The universe that would have not done any of this, let's talk about that, that path first. That path would have been like, all right, I'm just going to listen to everyone, get my college degree, which I got anyways. And I was like, then I'm going to get that job as a teacher, get a good 401k. I'm going to, you know, stick with my girl, have, of course, you know, if she's my girl and my girl, but regardless, a girl pretty much get the white picket fence, probably would have had a baby or two by now, you know, would have been looking forward to my summer vacation. And just a path that really wasn't for me, honestly. And until I heard Arash and like through all these trainings, it was like, I never like heard anyone really just speak the truth and just like, just like middle finger to the way of, of the way that society was painted, especially for me personally, it was painted that whole way. So now it's just like fucking make the necessary risks, get after it full force on life. And love the journey on the way because there's no way I'm like, yeah, I made it anywhere or anything yet. But simultaneously, just loving the path, you know, constant fulfillment and the struggle. If you were to say it's a struggle. Well, so what, what would be different if you were talking about the person in, in, in this universe? You could say like, what I was it? I heard the full force thing. Maybe I didn't. Maybe you said it and I didn't quite grab it. Like what? What is um? Okay, well, maybe moving, move, maybe moving forward, actually. Let's get into the meat of it. I think it'll become clear with this next question. Would be, okay. at some point, we stepped it up a notch, and that was a $5,000 training. Yeah. Actually, you did Tabiat. You did Tabiat yeah. online. So you did the, the, the last 
Tabiat training. I did two Tabiats. You did two? Oh, shit. You did the last two then because the second to the last one was the only extension version. There were two extension versions. Uh, yeah, I did but both the, extensions. But the last one was also a live event where Jordan Soucy, that, that was where Jordan Soucy came, and we've had him on the show, and he'll be back. And um, yeah, so you were there online. I remember Shane Smith was online too. Yeah, me and Shane. Two, two, or two other guys, I think. Uh, and okay, so you did the last two Tabiat. Um, and then two messengers. And then you did, I remember, okay, so there's, there's, you dropped 5K. That's a big investment. You dropped 5K for an online, just like 10, 10, yeah. uh, however many it is, 12 hours of video or whatever. And yeah. plus some supplemental lectures. Mm-hmm. And, and that started the journey, man, because it was that boom, boom. Then you missed one live messengers where Troy uh, or uh, Sultan Provence came. But then the next messengers, also not. But then the next messengers is Keys of the Matrix, which is arguably the most powerful. I feel like we're debating almost like the best Beatles albums or something, or best Led Zeppelin yeah. albums. But <laughs> the Matrix. No doubt. But, oh, the breaking open. You know, the final two Tabiats, what do you remember about those final two Tabiats? The final two Tabiats? The ones you did, yeah. Um, well, I remember the, those rules pretty much to live by. But for some reason, the code of the matrix is really just st- sticking out in my head like the, the most right now as we talk about this. Yeah, that's what's the trip because you paid 5K for the Tabiat, which was worth it. Yes or no? Yeah, of course. Yeah, it was. Definitely. Because you could, obviously you 100% it back. worth it. Everything I buy at Barash is for sure, it's always worth it. It's just, can I get the money right now to pay for it? <laughs> it's always- yeah, man, because it's an investment in yourself. You change yourself, you change your destiny, and you would have. You, you change your destiny, which is like happiness, rep, you know, mating, you know, uh, mm-hmm. fulfillment there, relationships, and, and money because you'll make the money. Mm-hmm. You'll make the money and not even on top of that, it gives you that confidence like, yes, I can pay this off, have this big amount. And moving forward, it's like, how could you charge someone 5K for something if you haven't personally bought something for 5K, you know? It's true. On, on the backside of that end as well. That's, it's like, that's a good way to say it. Yeah, that's why that's good. So I'll be selling 25 k yoga retreats for sure, yoga trainings. Yeah, yeah. and even more so. People will so, come. Yeah, p- p- they can. They should too because it'll be life changing. You know, it it changes your end, your destiny, but like your destination. Code of the Matrix really just like totally changed the destiny. I remember just like the first few days, there was like all this emotions afterwards, almost like yeah. just like breathing in deep, just like. Holy cow. Well, what was it like? Why was it like that for you? Give people a awareness they don't know. It was just like, almost like you want to, almost like you want to cry a little bit, but you want to cry and just move all your energy and just really live your life to the fullest. Wait, Not so this is like from, energy. this is from three days of online streaming, like just watching video. Like what was yeah. it in those videos? That it was did that like, video? even thinking about it and talking about it for some reason, like, you know, when you get the chills and your hand stands up, like that was happening, like pretty much maybe the whole time. And just like thinking about it, just right now talking about it, it kind of came. Well, let's talk more about it then. What's, what's going on? What do you, what do you remember about this uh, epic keys to the matrix, you know, messengers keys to the matrix? Well, a lot of, we did a lot of things on words and occult cold stuff that is so in front of our faces so in front of our faces that's invisible until it gets pointed out to you and it wasn't even just like okay of course it's that 12 hours that we got which was totally mind-blowing but not on top of that all it was like you have something afterwards that you're that you it's like continuous evolution and study after that like once you know it then it's like looking into words even even more and the power of it yeah, as you were just talking, I was visualizing, you know, if you had like a car, maybe the frame or something, or you were somehow like a car uh, designer, like maybe not like a high level engineer, but like, you know, these guys that do like tricked out cars or whatever and, yeah. uh, you know, pimp it out. And, you know, it's like, but your mind is not visible like the car. It's invisible. Mm-hmm. And, but you can do surgery on it. You could do all kinds of high level mechanics on your mind straighten things out, put in titanium rims and, you know, a new stereo system. And all of a sudden you hear better and you, you're, you move better in your mind. Definitely. And, you know, and then with keys to the matrix, you, you hear the keys to the, if the, if you could imagine, uh, you know, words come together. We were talking about this. I think at the, la- at the, maybe it was the last boot camp. 
you know, words, there's so many words, but there's a finite amount. There's not infinite number of words. And, but there's infinite ways to put them together. Mm -hmm. And how yeah. you put them together in so many different ways, you could almost, I imagine it almost like a three dimensional matrix, like a cobweb almost in all dimensions. And it just goes on and okay. it's a matrix of words. Mm -hmm. And somewhere in that matrix is all of our speech patterns and what our normal speaking, how we speak. Some of them are like DC says, like this self-talk, like we have self-talk uh, pattern somewhere in this matrix of words. And that's, that is the location in the field of consciousness of all possible consciousness. That's where we are located. And it has a vibe over in that region. You mm. know, that's how I kind of see it. But what, what do you think about that? And what, what do you think about self-talk? The first part of what you said reminds me of we were talking about the last boot camp about the, the kind of word pyramid where we're talking about trance change. And, uh, yeah, yeah, of course. I like what you said about that. Let's just go to self-talk, honestly, because I don't know what else to say about that other part. Self-talk, it's like... Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I was way out there in my head. <laughs> was, uh, did it said. make sense, at least, or was it just yeah, it made, far fetched yeah. yeah, it made sense. And back to the car thing, when you're talking about tricking out your cars, it's like a continuation of tricking out your mind. That's what I'm saying. Like, upgrading everything, even if mm -hmm. you could somehow upgrade your Toyota to a Lamborghini, but it's yeah. you, you obviously can't do that with the same frame. Like, you, it's just a completely different car. But in a way, you make your mind over, you like completely replace and yeah. you make it work. And, and it reflects out to the outside. But like what Rosh always says, like it takes time. It's like, thank God that I know this and not like you got to go all this life. Never even knew it or just knew it like too late or whatever. It, it Like you said, really changes destiny. Yeah, because, you know, there's definitely that existential crisis of I wish I had this sooner, which is mm -hmm. funny because part of Philosopher's Stone was existentialism. But yeah. the reality is that before you had it, you wouldn't even know what you were missing out on. So mm -hmm. you're, that's just a victim mentality because yeah. that's, just, that's just what, as soon as you get a blessing, you complain about not having it before. <laughs> like <laughs> you have it right now. Like if you have it now, you, you count your blessings and you drop your past because you know, that's just in the mind anyway. Yeah. So uh, I, I was going to ask actually, because this is behavior code. Um, which the idea of it came, I could say maybe somewhat from like Shane Smith's, uh, uh, um, uh, the mating. Science of attraction. Yeah. But there's something about code, uh, genetic code, something, something about genetic code where they talk Arash, Aikido in the past. And, you know, Malachi, I heard these guys talk about the genetic code mm -hmm. and it was fascinating. It, it, I, I saw it as like clever wordplay, like, okay, Arash hacked the genetic code. I didn't see it. I didn't know. I didn't understand. I had read Richard Dawkins' The Selfish Gene. And somewhere along the line, I believe I read uh, Sperm Wars. Okay. And some, somewhere in the middle of Sperm Wars or towards the end of Sperm Wars, I'm hanging out with Arash in Los Angeles. <laughs> Sperm Wars. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, mute yourself, <laughs> brother. But yeah, we'll, we'll take audience questions at some point. Um, but yeah, Sperm Wars is dope. Um, you could also type out things. Oh, it's very kind of bad, bro. Oh, is this? Did we get hacked? Oh, I think I got hacked again. Hold on. Hold on. We're going to exit this, uh, and then we'll just do a second one. DC, am I hacked? Is these a bunch? Of, yeah. No, I don't know. Are these people hacking? No, oh, we're just they... yeah, chill. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I'm we're here for the baseball chill. talk, to be honest. Yeah, we're, we're chill, man. We're chill. I follow you on Facebook. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. It's, a, it's a, <laughs> quite a big audience. Uh, for normal Zoom, most people are stay on the apps. But then also I'd say that on Wednesday podcasts, like three or four times I've been hacked by these people, that it's just all of a sudden it, it goes from like five to 12 people and then uh, they, they somehow take over the screen share and then put some like uh, gay porn or something and all of a sudden it's no longer oh, it, wow. like Facebook. Wow. Then Facebook takes down the video because of that. And it happened every time I started talking about Q Anonymous. It is hopeful, like. I've right? seen a few of them. Wow, that's crazy. That's a trip. When I talk, start talking about QAnon and the deep state, as soon as, oh, watch it, it'll happen now. Well, everybody pay attention. No, no, no. That, that's when I put on the setting on Zoom and it started adding the USO2web.zoom uh, to the web link. If you noticed, if you ever see Zoom web links now, they have this USO2 dot, uh, USO2 web dot. Um, but right, uh, anyway, long story short, 
or that, the, that's in the past. What was I talking about? It was this genetic code. So yeah, yeah, yeah. it was such a trick. Everybody can go ahead and mute. Uh, or I think that was Andrew, actually. Sorry, my bad. So this genetic code, I'm in Los Angeles, and I'm downtown seeing uh, Arash interact. And he does some things, and I couldn't point them out to you right now, like exactly, I, I don't recall exactly. But I remember thinking it was, it was like counterintuitive. It was the opposite, total opposite. It's almost like if you hear about a neg. If I back it up, is it ready? My name is Jackie Chan. Hold on. Are you sure this is a hater? This sounds like a hater. Clan. Big shoes yeah, and think, pointy hats. I think this is a hacker. My name is Jackie Yo, Chan, nigga, shut up. born leader of the Ku Klux Klan. Oh, wow. Hey, my nigga, shut up. Oh, man. See, so, all right. So, what am I going to do here is probably uh, close out and come back. What do you think? I just mean balling out every season. So, I think Ramadan shut up. So, I'm just going to close out and come back to this. I'm just going to close out.